Hello. Uh, in my last video, I um, I showed you kind of like what energy is and what work is and how they're kind of like interchangeable. Hopefully that makes sense. We figured out that uh, the, for the work applied is just the force that you're applying times the distance that you're applying it for, and if necessary, times the cosine of the angle, so that way you figure out how much force you're applying in that x direction. Um, so hopefully that was made clear. Uh, I don't think it's too hard to really get a general grasp of, at least. Um, the next thing that I'm going to get into is called uh, kinetic energy. And as it turns out, um, oh, that's my alarm. Um, kinetic energy is just kind of like what it sounds like kinetic, the energy that a moving object has. Basically, uh, if I have something, let's see if I can work this out. Nope, I can never work it out. I, how do you, how is that line tool supposed to work? That stupid... Okay. So say something flies through the air, and it hits this person. See, I feel proud of myself right now, because I figured out how to use that line tool. That curvy line tool. So say something is flying through the air, and it hits this person, and his head falls off, or whatever. Um, this apple or whatever, yeah, maybe it's an apple, flying through the air, is gonna, or maybe it's a ball, it's gonna have some kind of energy, right? Because it's flying through the air. I mean, how did it get moving? You had to put energy into it, you had to apply some force to it. So how much, e but how much energy does something in motion have? And we're gonna kind of, uh, chug through the proof. It's not actually that bad at all. Uh, it's going to come from one of the kind of mysterious equations that uh, we worked with. And uh, either one will make the other clear, or the first one will make this one clear. I don't know, we'll see. Um, one of the things that we said was that the, velo the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2AD. Right? Everyone remember that one? Oops, forgot to square it. Um, everyone remember this? I hope D, remember, was uh, the displacement. Uh, so what can we kind of uh, say here? What, what actually do we already know right off the bat? Uh, well, let's see. If you're applying a force, applying a force across some distance, it's starting from rest, right? Maybe it's got a mass m. It, this is starting from rest. So it's not moving initially. So that means that its final in, uh, velocity is zero, right? So we can actually just cross that out of the equation. One sec. Okay. Um, so we can just cross that out of the equation. And then we're left with the final velocity squared is uh, 2 times a times d. Well, uh, let's go over here for a sec and just call kind of off on the side. We know from like Newton's laws, or whatever, force is mass times acceleration, right? That was our, uh, our like our weight is equal to the uh, the mass of the object times acceleration and gravity. Force is mass times acceleration in whatever context you use it. So let's uh, multiply both, or rather, divide both sides by the mass. Right? Then we get that acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. And this does not sound all that impressive. At all. Um, but you'll see that it actually does kind of help. So let's rewrite this equation. Forgive my handwriting, but I think it's better if I write it than if I try to type it. Final velocity squared equals, remember we figured out that this is zero, so we can just scribble that out. Equals two times, I think my handwriting is getting better by the way times the force times the distance over the mass, right? Now we just plug this in right here for A, so force times distance over mass. Now, you see, this right here looks a lot like work, and it is work, right? Force times distance, the force that you apply times the distance you apply it for, it's how much work you do. So let's plug that in, we get the, fi the final velocity. Well, I'm just going to say it's the velocity, because we know that it's starting from rest, so whatever velocity it's at at the end, that's its velocity. So I'm just going to say v. So v squared 
because because right we want to find out the amount of energy in the system uh, or in the in the, in the ball when it's hitting me right when, when it's hitting the guy in the back of the head or whatever so we're looking at the final velocity so I'm just going to put velocity because that's all we really care about the final velocity so we get two times what's force times distance well, that's work that's the W um, divide, and that's divided by meters. Oops. Divided by meters. Let's multiply both sides by meters. We'll put the, we'll basically just multiply this by meters, and multiply this by meters. And, uh, these. Sorry, crazy alarm again. And these cancel out. So right now we have two W's is equal to mass times velocity squared. And if we divide both sides by two, we get that the work done or rather, the work um, that can be done by something in that you know, it's moving, or the energy that it has, the energy that that has, kind of, like that that moving object, the energy that it has because of its because of its motion, not because of anything else, just because of, its, because of its motion. If we divide both sides by two, we get mass times the velocity squared divided by two. Right, and we saw this kind of just follows from, uh, we took the weird kinetic equation, um, and we just kind of plugged in what, uh, what acceleration is in terms of force and mass, and we found out that, uh, the work kind of comes out of that. So, if, if you ever need to figure this out, on a, maybe on a test you can't remember the formula for kinetic energy, and this is definitely possible, I'm going to say kinetic energy. KE, because that's what you'll see all the time. KE, kinetic energy. Uh, if you ever can't remember the formula for kinetic energy, and it will happen, I guarantee you, because it's a pain to remember sometimes. Um, if you ever can't remember that, well then, just think, take the hard equation to remember. Let me think about it. This is the difficult equation to remember, kind of. Eh, kind of. But you shouldn't have to remember. But basically, you, you, we're just going to take that weird equation. Uh, remember that the initial velocity is zero, and just plug in what A is, that F over M that we figured out right over here from Newton's Law. And uh, you should kind of see that the force and the distance, that's the work. Uh, and then it's a little bit of algebraic manipulation, and you end up with that the kinetic energy equals mass times velocity squared over 2. And uh, this is exactly what it sounds like. Right, um, there is absolutely nothing tricky about this equation. If I have, uh, something that's moving at, say, 10 meters per second at this instant, remember when it hits me in the head, at 10 meters per second, and it, it has a mass of, uh, notice I'm saying mass, not weight. It has a mass of, say, 3 new three uh, kilograms, maybe someone's throwing like a rock at me or something, three kilograms, well then all we do is we're going to take mass squared, right, m v squared, so 10 squared, I could have guessed that one, uh, times the mass, times three, divided by two, right, divided by two, and we got 150, and how many, and that's 150, so that gives us 150. And what do we say our units are? Well, our units are joules. Because again, it's, it's work, it's energy. Um, think, if you can't, if you have trouble remembering that, think uh, how much work you have to do to buy some joules, because they're expensive. <laughs> it's actually spelled uh, J-O-U-L-E-S, like that. Like maybe like a nickname for Julie or something, but it's joules. So that's how much energy is in a moving object. Hopefully that makes sense. It's fairly straightforward. There is, I'm not even going to do really any practice problems on this other than just that one because it's a formula. I mean, there, right now, at least to the extent that we're doing this right now, there is nothing that should really be confusing about how to use this. You plug in numbers. There's nothing more to it, more than that. So uh, hopefully I made that everything clear. Uh, it was kind of a long video, so sorry about that. But um, 
uh, probably the next thing I'm going to cover is going to be um, potential energy and um, maybe just the work in kinetic energy theorem. I'm uh, kind of actually working through some of the slides and just trying to teach you what, um, well, just try to teach you what you're going to need to know. So, um, I'll see you then.